Rogers TV. Welcome back to Kickback. My name is Ben. My name is Greg. Nice we're, to meet you. We're so excited to have you here. Today joining us is Jordan. Jordan, thank you for joining us from Brant Mental Health Solutions. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Today we're talking about the connection between mental health and technology. And now over the last three years, everything's been shifted to virtual. As much as possible has been shifted to virtual. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the importance, uh, especially, specifically for young people, the importance of uh, being face-to-face -face with people and having those interactions? For sure. Um, I think we've kind of seen that over the past 20 years, like a slow shift, just with technology and having mm -hmm. to be on computers to be going to school and mm -hmm. do assignments and things like that. And then introduction of social media and all of that. And then the unprecedented happens with COVID and it kind of kicks things into hyperdrive in terms of the amount of stimulation kids and teens are getting. Yeah. Um, so I think it even baffled like the experts on, whoa, like what do we do here? And what is, first, what do we do right now? and two, what's it going to be like for their, literally for their developing brain yeah. to you manage kinda, this input? They kind of broke ground here, you know? Like, yeah. no one's ever had to get educated like this before or entertain themselves like this before, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I think we're already trying to figure out how do we best, which is a good thing, how do we best help people that learn differently? Mm -hmm. And then, boom, sorry, for all of you that learn differently, this is the best we, we have. We have one way. Right. Right. Yeah, we yeah. have one way, and it's it's no teacher's fault. It's no, you know, not even yeah. school board. It's just no. that's what our option is. And the domino effect of, like, incredible challenges for teachers, uh, administrators, parents, grandparents, like, everybody basically had to come together, right? How do you work from home? How do you, right? Every, so everybody's on screens. Yeah. What do you think the biggest issues coming out of that period have been? I keep on, like, just for work, like, we have to, continuing education, so, like, I'm always getting, you know, it's, with technology, the nice part is you're always, I'm always getting <laughs> nice little articles that tell me, you know, what's going on right. in science and the brain, but um, I see it at, in my work and uh, through studies and stuff that basically I'm seeing exactly what the science says is we're not meant to intake, have an intake of this much stimulation yeah. um, in that short period of time. Um, we were already pushing the limits with that. Mm -hmm. um, and the result is we don't fully understand, but we're starting to see some things, of course, attention issues and things like that. But right now is the big thing is um, things like attention, uh, being able to stay on task and uh, fluctuation in mood are definitely the big, the big two or three there. How does it do that? Like, how do I go on Instagram or how do I go on Facebook? And then it has that kind of effect on me, um, especially because the platform seems to provide it as like, here's some nice pictures and here's some cool videos and here's something that you've never thought of before, which mm -hmm. could be seen as benefits. So how could these things um, be kind of flipped upside down like this on us? Uh, again, I think it's, it's not only the amount of material and stimulation that you're intaking within sometimes milliseconds that stretches into hours sometimes, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, they did a study years ago on Facebook because it's just because it's been around the longest. Sure. So I think you can apply, like, I'll quickly tell you, I think you can apply that to things like TikTok because it's almost just Facebook and hyperdrive, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that was bad enough with, sc yeah. so the main thing is scrolling. So it's the amount of information you take in, right. but it's never, enough right so we've all heard you know things like sugar or you know addictive mm -hmm. right because your brain just tells you i want more of this because it brings me pleasure right. releases certain hormones and chemicals right right neurotransmitters well that scrolling gives you little little blips if they could do a scan and you like on a like a, a monitor you'd see these blips like right? microdosing. yeah mm -hmm. basically right so mm -hmm. it's like that it's like the brain just oh this feels good and I'd like this to continue, if I can, to make it a, in the summary. Where you, that's kind of what's going on. And then the brain says, "Hey, what, what the heck? Where, yeah. where'd the stimulation go? It's dinner time, or whatever. Irritability, you know, like right. low mood, high anx anxiety is really, really spiked, mm -hmm. particularly in older children, teenagers, young adults." Right. If if there's parents or caregivers um, that are seeing this in their kids. Um, or the children that they're looking after, are what are some things that they can do to kind of help uh, maybe push their, their children away from the screen? Right, so 
I'm never the type of person that's like, don't use these specific types of words. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. we're all human, right? <laughs> so I think parents, that's what I need to get you away or push you away. But then they literally try to push away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, they're already fear, feeling irritable and low mm -hmm. and anxious. And that's almost like the wrong thing to do. But mm -hmm. we think, well, that's what I gotta do. I'm gonna kind of punish you. Get that word out of your mind. It's I'm going to shift you from this to this. Mm -hmm. Providing options, right? So it's, look it, I just need to talk to you for two seconds. I know you're busy <laughs> with your friends, right? It's been this long, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna have dinner and then we're gonna do this. Or I want you to, if their parent is, like if it's during COVID, if their parent's okay that they're coming over, I want them to come over, mm -hmm. right? And explaining to your kids that literally we're not designed mm -hmm. for this. It is a fact of life. I will never say don't get into tech. It's part of life. We have right. to. It's the amount and the amount of time and the spurts that we spend, yeah. right? So it's educating them in a way so it's not just I am parent wagging my finger at you educating they're smart enough to know i think sometimes we underestimate what kids can understand they can understand a lot yes they can. <laughs> right they can um there, just quickly um do you feel like some of these platforms are intentionally um playing this game where they're giving so much reward that it's difficult for other factors to give the same amount absolutely um no conspiracy theorist here but the fact is the advertisement industry is the advertisement industry. Yes. They've been doing it. There's literal, I was telling a client the other day, there's, there are literal jobs where your job is to get people to engage and stay online. Yes. And stay right. engaged, like whether that's a good or bad thing, yeah. right? Um, sorry, what was the question again? Well, maybe just recognizing that mm -hmm. um, there are these factors out there and that they are intended to sell products, yep. you know, but through that recognition, knowing how to limit and uh, be a little bit more conservative in our approach towards these social media platforms. Right. Uh, and so if we can use some of these things to our advantage, but not use it so much that it's causing us to be distracted from our family or right. be distracted from our friends, but it's there to augment or enhance our mm -hmm. friendships. And so I do want to share pictures of my sister's achievements, right? Mm -hmm. I do want to, yeah. uh, I do want people to know that, you know, I had a great day at work, you know? Yeah. However, um, if it gets into, you must have a great day just like me, otherwise your life's no good, I think that's when it gets toxic. Right. Completely agree. Definitely. Right. And I know we've only got about uh, 90 seconds left, um, but talking about like people comparing themselves, and that's something that everybody deals with. Oh. And I think that social media has taken that to the new level because it's only the good. Not too many people share the bad, um, but can you just talk a little bit about maybe starting that discussion with your kids? Yes. Um, about comparing. Right, so that's, a, that's one of the big keys, right? So that's what they found in that kind of Facebook study was even if we're, we think we're conscious, we do unconsciously pick things up yes. a lot, right? So I am scrolling, doesn't matter what platform it is. I see this person's on vacation. I see this person has a new boyfriend or girlfriend. I see, right, all these accomplishments, graduation. And on the surface, I say, oh, good for them. I'm their friend. I feel good for them. But there's that little voice in the back that's like, well, that would be nice for me. Or should I be doing right. that? Right, we call those shoulds. And we're going to stop you there, but we'll yeah. pick that up after the break. Yeah, we'll be right so back. Brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Hey folks, it's me, Giovanni Petiti, the host of the RTV Quiz Show, the hottest show on television. It's the hilarious quiz show where you, the viewers, play for valuable non-existent prizes. It's got great trivia, fun facts, and a lot of laughs, all blended together in a perfect cocktail of edutainment. So join us Wednesdays at 7.30, right here on Rogers TV. Nice.
Our world is changing. Now more than ever, we have seen firsthand the brutality of systematic racism. Here in Canada, we can do better. It is time to connect, commit, and change. I'm Queen. And I'm Aliyah Ali, and we're inviting you to join us on Diverse and Converse. We'll connect you with leaders from the Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities. Now is the time for change. Long way from Nashville and Mama, I tell you that. Performed from Montreal to Boston to Los Angeles. But Toronto, that's my chosen home. Sure, when I'm walking down Young Street, I see some funny people who have the nerve to point the finger at me. And grin and smile and whisper. My song was number two on local radio. I sold 10,000 in Toronto alone. Turned down Ed Sullivan because they asked me to remove my makeup. Wouldn't do American Bandstand because of their segregation policies. I was just being me. Never tried to explain myself to anyone. And besides, none of that don't worry, Jack, because I know I look good. Got a new way of loving, baby. Thought I want to teach it to you. Jackie Shane was a pioneer transgender soul singer, a central figure in the Toronto R&B scene. She helped shape what we know as the Toronto Sound. In studio and on the road invites you to find out what's happening in your own backyard. From tasty treats to interesting people and places, join host Vic Fulliet for In Studio and On the Road, Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, some people used the A word. They called it an accident, but it wasn't. An accident implies that no one was at fault. But when someone impaired by alcohol and or drugs chooses to drive, they're fully responsible for the crash that can result. So please, for the memory of my brother DJ and the thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by impaired drivers, let's drop the A word. A crash caused by impaired driving is not an accident. Welcome back to Kickback, Ben, Greg, and we're again joined by Jordan. Jordan, just before the break, we were talking about uh, technology and mental health, social media, and we were talking about comparing. Yeah. So I just want to reiterate and just start back from that. We were talking about starting that discussion with your kids about not doing that. Can right. you just uh, kind of like go through that yeah. again? Yeah, and I, I think it kind of goes along with what I was saying before is, Parents have this urge like to, I'm protecting you, this is for your own good. Mm -hmm. Again, they understand things more than you think they do. So you're gonna sit down and go with them and sh educate them as to why there are negatives of this. Yeah. Right. right? It's not just, you're bad. this is bad, yeah. right? That's when they'll push back. I would say you verbally push somebody, they will verbally push you back, yeah. right. right? But if you invite them, then they'll take yeah. the invite, right? right. And those uh, teenagers, they're, they're exploring counterculture. Mm -hmm. You know, they're exploring what it's like to challenge their mom and dad on stuff like this. Yeah. And if you give them the challenge, they're going to meet it. And that's what teenagers are great for, <laughs> meeting challenge, <laughs> right? However, um, teenagers are also great for bringing on in on the team. They want to be included, mm -hmm. you know? And if you as the parent can deliver that, maybe you, there's a strategy there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the healthiest social media usage in teens that I see is when it's done for a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's where I see. So do you, of course it's great if you have a, a strict initiative, you work for a charity or you want to get, of course that's great. But as long, even if it has to do with your hobby or your, right, you're not rubbing it in somebody's face and you're not looking for, so that's, we were kind of alluding to that before where it's like, look at me, look at me. Yeah. It's not, that's the unhealthy kind of gratification, right? The healthy gratification is, look what I do, you can do it too in your own way. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you this because I want to make people entertained, happy. There's no agenda behind this. Right. When we kind of get in our mind as a teen, they're like, this is my agenda. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, Then we're going down the wrong road. Right. Yes. And what is that overstimulation, like that constant bombardment of like the mindless, the scrolling? Like myself as an adult, I catch myself <clears throat> in that and I'm like, oh, <laughs> put it down yeah. and like stop that but as a as a youth like the ability to like understand and catch yourself is probably a lot less than yeah. what an adult is able to do yeah. yeah um so what is that overstimulation doing to to our youth 
So that's what they're looking at a lot right now. They're, of course, we didn't want COVID to happen, but it presents this opportunity where we can learn a lot about mm -hmm. the developing brain, right? Um, simply put, that stimulation, they're still figuring it out a bit. Uh, certain areas of the brain need to be nurtured and, and other areas need to kind of not be uh, lit up mm -hmm. as you actually turn up until 25, right? And what the world's doing with the stimulation is kind of putting things into hyperdrive in terms of certain areas of the brain growing and other areas getting stagnated. Mm -hmm. So for teens, for example, it would be uh, they have a hard time seeing consequences to things, so they make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes that part of the brain develop. Well, if there's no consequence and they're just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, it's constantly being thrown at them on the screen, right? That area of the brain will literally stagnate or grow too much. <laughs> so we're trying to bat, it's like this battle we're trying to push back against what the world is throwing at. It's like a evolutionary thing, mm -hmm. you know, like an adaptation. Yeah. And it seems like with this bombardment of stimulation coming down, the kids are trying to adapt, but they don't, the guidance comes from us, right? And we, we don't have any experience that. in this. Yeah. yeah. And for a lot of us, we only got the internet after we were done being kids, mm -hmm. you know? And so yep. like to, to relate with them, no wonder they feel so separate, you know, yeah. and so alone sometimes. And some like entire social circles now revolve around like gaming, yeah. right? Like that's yeah. how they spend their entire yeah. time. Yeah, it's actually, you know, like um, they're, they create an identity around mm -hmm. it. And where in the past we were seeing identities created around, uh, I don't know, athletic prowess right. or being great at the spelling bee, you know, right. having mm -hmm. a skill that helped identify you as a person. Now it's a million people who have prestige class on Call of Duty, Call of Duty yeah. and you know, like, and you've bought all the best weapons and you know, all that kind of stuff right. to gain that status, <laughs> but it's not real skill. Right. right. Real skill happens physically. Right. Yeah. Real skill happens mentally. Mm -hmm. But when it's occurring virtually, that can be augmented in any way, including through purchase. Right. Yeah. Which I don't think is maybe the most healthy thing out there. But uh, then again, I don't participate in that culture at the, its deepest level. Yeah. Right. And I think like it, I mean, there's definitely some positives to take out of the game and like the communication sure. and being able to do that. The can you speak? Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, can you speak to some of the like the positive and negative effects of Absolutely. gaming? Yeah, I think I think where kind of what lit up in my brain as you were talking was uh, a lot of clients telling me, uh, you know, makes you feel, makes you feel old, but like I knew what they were talking about right. was I have my IRL friends and my yeah. online friends <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. in yeah. real life or anything. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. And it used to be, you know. Not, not that it's you know putting anybody down, but a long time ago it would be maybe I'm not the most popular, or maybe I'm not the most socially skilled. So then I I have to have mm -hmm. online friends, yeah. and I don't blame anybody. But now it's hey, this is what's in. I have online friends, and maybe yeah. I have in real life friends, right? Right. right. Um, but it's getting. We can't escape how the brain's designed, though. Right? right. So I always tell those clients, I'm so glad that you have a community. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. so glad you have some sort of connection. But your brain isn't designed to only. Yeah. have that so I always encourage form that community get to know them you're still speaking with them over a mic right you use that what they call discord right yeah, yeah, I learned yeah. that um, and then you can try your best to carry that over hey this is great can we go for dinner can we go to the movies right can we go if you're old enough go for a drink can we right yeah stuff yeah. like that and it it's I do find it challenging but I really work with people like it's it, sometimes it's what parents would consider that simple stuff, that is what will literally develop the brain, yeah. right. right? That social interaction. Putting them into those situations. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and it's, and I'm not, I'm, I think the phrase for your own good kind of has got a bad rap. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. when you punish somebody for their own good, yeah. but when you introduce somebody gently for their own good, it's for their health, right? Yeah. right? That social interaction. And I work on a lot of that with clients. Like the anxiety has built, especially in the last few years of, yeah being social and be and it's it's the classic if you don't use it you lose it yeah. right you have to build momentum yeah. with social interaction it sounds like maybe parents could think about approaching even their kids and th with this style that you approach your clients where it's just kind of right. giving them those opportunities and opening that door what would you think would be the quickest easiest way for a parent to just get in mm -hmm. there and just be like i want to help right now it would be again so it's not like I've already given the answer, but it's it's more, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing and I want to understand 
and then I will share with you what I'm seeing and what I understand yeah. from this. Yeah. And again, educating what the facts are, and you provide, again, those options. It's not, you have to do this or this. Then you're verbally pushing, I say. Then they'll push you back yep. with their irritability, their mood, silence, yep. seclusion. We see right. how it, it just keeps coming back to that That's wall, right. right? You persist with not pushing, but you persist with the social. So, hey, have you talked to this person, your friend? Are they allowed to have people over? Mm -hmm. Are they like, you're not pushing, you're just wondering, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I would say they, they call that in counseling, questions of wonderment. So I'm, you know, I'm just wondering, cause I'm not, I'm not pushing. And that's perception's huge. Yes. That's how they perceive, not always what you're saying. Totally. Right? And Jordan, where can parents find uh, more information about everything that we've discussed today? Uh, we have a lot of blog articles um, on our website, brandmentalhealth.com. Um, you can speak to somebody like me. There are a lot of online resources, things like Psychology Today, uh, Canadian Mental Health Association, right? I can, I can list a ton of things, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, offices like mine, Brand Mental Health Solutions, things like that. Sounds like people can reach out to you anytime. Thanks yeah. a lot for your time, Jordan. Yeah. We really appreciate that, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We'll be right back. Yep. Weekly in-depth coverage of the most local stories in Stratford, Perth, Brantford, Brant, Guelph, Wellington, and the Waterloo region. Hyperlocal stories that matter to you and your community. All this and more on your region this week. All local, all year round. New episodes every Friday at 7 p.m. right here on Rogers TV. On the Art Trail with Joanne returns for season two. We have a terrific lineup coming up for you. We will be interviewing folks like gallery owners, musicians, a theater impresario, a master Japanese calligrapher, and much more. So watch On the Art Trail with Joanne, Saturdays at seven. Learn how to create your own masterpiece while in the comfort of your own home. On the Canvas with Lisa Braun is a step-by-step -step art lesson. On the Canvas, coming this fall to Rogers TV. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks. And it shattered her world. <laughs> My name is Chase Nicholas. I am a Mi'kmaq hockey player. Growing up, I always remember my family talking about the Mi'kmaq as the creators of the game of hockey. In grade seven, I did research on Mi'kmaq hockey sticks as the first sticks of the NHL. I found a Mi'kmaq hockey stick made in 1917, the same year the NHL was formed. I was surprised to find out the very stick I was holding was made by my great-great-grandfather, Alexander Cope. In 1934, an elder known as Old Joe Cope wrote a letter to the Halifax Herald claiming the Mi'kmaq created hockey. I found out later that I am a direct descendant of Old Joe Cope. There was a time when Mi'kmaq children were torn from their families and not allowed to speak their language, losing their words and stories. But the stories are coming back to us. Stepping on the ice, I take pride knowing the roots of the game of hockey stem from my ancestors in the Mi'kmaq nation. Online betting is booming! Booyah! Woo! Oh yeah! You can win big! But you could also lose. There is risk with online gambling. And that's a reality nobody's shouting about. Learn about safer play at knowtherisks.ca. Welcome back to Kickback. We have our longtime friend, Dave, Carol. Thank you so much for joining us ben in the studio. sitting in our fake living room here together with you. Yeah. What a pleasure. You know what? There's, there's nowhere I'd rather be right now. <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. Uh, so Dave, thank you so much for coming in again. Um, and we're here to discuss your personal story. And I know that um, 
we were just talking and you had mentioned that we were just kind of reminiscing about that first year of kickback. Um, do you want to share a little bit about yeah, that sure. first kind of introduction there? And, I can't remember. I mean, in? was that three years ago, four years ago, something so like that? actually like six. Oh my gosh. So this, will, this will be our fifth year of doing this in the ver different variations of well, everything. And well, yeah. yeah, when you asked me to come and be a part of it, I said, well, sure, because uh, my policy is when Ben Strasser asks me to do something, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. And, and I started to think about what I was going to talk about. And, uh, and it, it, was, I, I, it was right around the time where I started to realize where I have been dealing with social anxiety, and I didn't even really realize it, honestly, mm -hmm. for many years. And, um, and, and I, had just, I had just hit the mark where I'm like, okay, uh, something isn't right. Like I had had a, a, a time not that long before we did kickback where I was at a church event. It was a past, uh, still pastor uh, Freedom House Church. We were there in an evening and I was in the office in the dark where was a, uh, an event was about to happen and I was texting my wife and I said, Chrissy, I can't, I can't come out of the office. I can't do it. I can't be around people. And she's like, get out of the office. Mm -hmm. I said, can't do it. And I bailed and I walked home from downtown. I live in Eagle Place. I walked home in the rain. I, as I was walking home in the rain, I twisted my ankle and fell in the mud. And I limped home in the rain, mm -hmm. uh, running away from an event at the church. And I thought, I'm going to call this rock bottom. Uh, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's call this a wake up call. But it, it hadn't been long after that happened that we, that we started talking on kickback. And mm -hmm. it, um, it sort of began a bit of a journey for me over the next little while of um, actually finding a great degree of liberation and freedom just by admitting it and talking about it and uh, come a long way since then still still deal with this but it's um yeah it was it was so thanks to kickback thanks for asking me to do it all those years ago well i'm glad that that, that was the case and that's kind of the whole goal of why that we're doing this just to kind of start those conversations and kind of just if we can help one person kind of start that conversation or have that that realization moment then that's that's what it's all about um, can you share a little bit about what it meant for you to to uh, have that moment of realization? Like to say that this something was maybe you were struggling with <laughs> for a period of time and then yeah. it's like, this what is what it is. What did it mean to me? I was yeah. like, oh, great. Here's another thing I'm going to have to deal with in my right. life, right? But yeah. we all have things that we have to deal with and it and you almost progressively admit to yourself. Like, so for years I would just say, well, I don't really like crowds or I don't mm -hmm. but it, it's not even crowds if I, I could I could stand in front of a stadium of 10,000 people and and talk for an hour and it would be like nothing is happening mm -hmm. but if I'm in a, 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 a dinner party of six six or eight people and I'm just like ah get me out of here bugs are crawling all over me right. and and but what it did was begin to open the door for me to actually admit it and when I when I said the words social anxiety I went oh maybe that actually is what this is. And I, I, it, it started me uh, reading about it, but then also it made me start to analyze and go, all right, when does this happen? How does it happen? And what are gonna be some strategies to be able to make it so I didn't just avoid uh, human contact forever? And so little things like if I'm in a meeting and the meeting is about, is, uh, is any more than an hour, I, if, I'll, if, I, if I've gotta be around people hours before, uh, it'll click in my head and go, I don't want to do this. And I'll right. start, I'll go through the, I'm going to just make up an excuse. Can't make it. Sorry, not feeling well. And then I have to get through the excuses moment. I'm like, okay, I made it through excuses. So I guess we are actually <laughs> going. And yeah. then, I'll, then I'll get there and and then I'll, I'll have a certain amount of time and then it'll hit me and I'll, I'll go, okay, I need to be able to step outside and get a breath of fresh air or I'll pretend to have to go to the bathroom and stare at myself in the mirror right. and splash water on my face and almost hit a reset button and go, okay, all right, I can, I, okay, and I'm back. And so, but I had to figure that stuff out for myself until I started talking about it more openly and publicly mm -hmm. because what I found was other people who I've known for years uh, reach out and go, yeah, you know what, I've got the same thing. And then we almost shared crib notes of how to be able to get through right, it, what, right. what are some of the different coping mechanisms that you use and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and uh, I, I had, an, I, but I, 
what I didn't realize until recently was how this impacted other people and how I realized that maybe I was dealing with it myself or within our marriage and, and that kind of thing. But I hadn't really shared a, a lot of the process with others. And so it was actually about a year ago now, we were supposed to go out for a Christmas dinner with uh, two couples, longtime friends mm -hmm. that we do a whole lot with. And we were supposed to go to the keg for a Christmas dinner. Well, I, I was having, I was having a, a bad day and I made it to the restaurant and I'm out in the car and I'm like, I cannot go in there. And Chrissy's like, they can see you through the window. Right, right. You were going and you're going to have a steak and you're going to like it. And, <laughs> yeah. and so I made it in, but clearly I was uncomfortable. Um, they told me later, I talked more to the waiter than I did to my <laughs> friends. And because in my mind, I'm like this, I, I've gone down the bad road. It's going to be very difficult to, uh, a, a trip to the potty is not going to do it this time. Right, right. A and, and so I made it through the night and thought everything was fine. A few months later, one of, one of the friends, I, I, had, I felt like something was off and they, and they thankfully confronted me and said, you know, ever since that night, I kind of wondered like, do you even really enjoy being around us? Like right. that night, it was like you wanted to be anywhere but here. And I said, yeah, that's because I wanted to be anywhere but there. Yeah. And it's truly not you, it's me. And I shared some of my process that I had kept as a quiet thing. And I realized that I could have lost real friendships over people not understanding some of the mental gymnastics and battle that I was walking through. And I thought, okay, this, this is why sharing really is important because it, it helps, it helps take, take all the stigma out of it mm -hmm. and all the weight out of it. Like me having to get up and take a deep breath every, every hour is not a big thing, mm -hmm. but then people also know, all right, this is, this is Dave. He's dealing with it and all good. Like, and so I, I can't, I can't talk about the importance of kickback and this type of thing in, in higher regard. And I've really learned that in, in, in my life and seen it in, in, in the world and others that it's not nothing. Talking about it is not nothing. It's been the single most important thing for me in helping me understand and overcome. And, uh, and every time I've ever shared this story, I've just seen countless others go, I kind of suffer with the same kind of thing, but I suffer silently thanks for giving some voice to it mm -hmm. and i'm like i guess if i've got to deal with it i might as well do something good with it right, right. right. <laughs> so. exactly and we've we've got about a minute left dave can you just share like what would be if you were sitting in front of somebody that maybe is uh, struggling themselves what would you share with them yeah you're not broken mm. you know that um being able to not not just share willy-nilly because that's you, you don't know what the response is going to be from everybody unless you're doing it intentionally but to be able to find some good people that you can have as accountability and you can um, let them encourage you in the in the moments leading up to to be able to get through and um, people that you can almost have as your wingman when you're when you're in places and if you're if I'm like all right, Ben, I gotta get out of here. And you're like, okay, Dave's gonna be able to, like, to be able <laughs> yeah. to let people in on it, to be able, and to be able to be be partners um, with, with with people. It's uh, and pe people are more than willing to, and so yeah, you're not broken. You're gonna be yeah. fine. Go to dinner, have a steak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be in a book one day. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. in studio today. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you taking the time to share your story, and we'll be right back after these messages. It's me, Giovanni Petiti, the host of the RTV Quiz Show, the hottest show on television. It's the hilarious quiz show where you, the viewers, play for valuable non-existent prizes. It's got great trivia, fun facts, and a lot of laughs, all blended together in a perfect cocktail of edutainment. So join us Wednesdays at 7.30 right here on Rogers TV. Nice. Personal finance show that dares to ask those money questions you've always wanted to. Join Mike Brega when he talks with experts on all aspects of money. Money Matters with Mike Brega, Thursdays at 8 p.m. on Rogers TV. Coming soon to Rogers TV. Join Carolina Suarez for Tapestry Hall Style. Wait to show you the latest coming soon to Rogers TV. I was born and raised in Musqueam First Nation territory by my mother who spoke Hunt Kaminam to me. 
As a child, I ceased using my mother tongue as to use any language other than English was considered not being Canadian, so I was told. The old people came to me in a dream and reminded me of who I am and where I come from. I have reawakened. My roots are strong and I'm no longer a silent speaker. My language tells me where I'm from. It defines me and guides me to teach others to learn and understand our culture and traditions. A gift for those in the present and the unborn generation. What was lost is found. What was asleep has awakened. My blood is here and I am complete. I have returned home. Get a little messy while having a whole lot of fun. Mindful Makers explores the world around you and inspires you to think outside the box. Join Agnes and her friends as they share crafty projects and talk to local artists. Mindful Makers, Mondays at 6 p.m. on Rogers TV. With clubs, leagues, and courts in every province and territory across Canada, squash is the sport for wall-to-wall -wall fun, fitness, and friendship. From coast to coast to coast. Learn to play and you'll want to do it every day. Squash, play inside the box. Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm Ben. We're kicking back here. We got uh, Kristen and Sophia with us. They're going to be talking yeah. about us uh, to us mm -hmm. about social media and the effect that it has on uh, on some people in our neighbors or yeah. community and just kind of in the world, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This so is kind of a hot yeah. topic. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for, for joining us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, Kristen, to start, can you just talk a little bit about the effect that like social media has had on specifically adults? Adults, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think a lot of us are millennials here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know that we were the technology age. And I think growing up with that, not really knowing the effects of social media is really hard for us to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, getting to the kids here, hopefully we teach them good lessons. But for us, we're still learning. Mm -hmm. The effects are hard. We don't, we're highly distractible. Yeah. yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sure I, yeah. everyone can attest to that. So, um, yeah, it's been, I would say, a learning process yeah. for social I, media. I think <laughs> the kids got us beat, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. they, they, <laughs> they got this yeah. right from like knee high to a grasshopper, and they had a chance to kind of roll with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I met the internet when I was 16 years old, and yeah. I was excited, right? <laughs> right? It was the Wild West, right? And I'm still <laughs> a little excited about it. Yeah. But that's part of the problem, is that everything for me is just still so brand new that I'm getting old enough that I can't even keep up yeah. with how new it right. is. You indulge, yep. and it doesn't, you don't know when to stop, and that's part of mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah. yeah. And so I know for me, I get on my scroll, you might too, and uh, it can be very absorbing. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, where you forget. I remember when TikTok first came out, it was like a whole. At the beginning like, of the pandemic, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. it was like you'd start, and all of a sudden you're watching starfish being pulled out of yeah. the sea, and then you're watching yeah. people dancing, Black and then, then it's like an hour yeah. is gone. You're like, yeah. that was supposed to be five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. like, how, yeah. like um, I want to talk, like adults, and just like maybe. Like we got forced, like because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we were forced to be very virtual. Right. Our interactions, we we had to wear masks mm -hmm. because of that. We lost the ability to see um, people's facial yeah. emotions, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, can you talk to us a little bit about what that's done to people, and maybe some of like the anxiety that's come around that that you might be seeing now? I think it's impacted like our social skills, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're on social media, we're missing out on social cues um, and not able to. 
um, what, what impacts the way we communicate when we go in person. Um, and so, and, and the, the funny thing is too, is that when we're in like in the social environment, we're feeling anxious, we're feeling awkward, we're gonna naturally take out that phone and, and, and cling onto spot. the phone. And, yeah. and, but what that does really, it impacts our ability to develop those social skills and to really confront our anxiety. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what is FOMO? And how does it affect us? <laughs> a, a lot, I think. Fear, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's... Fear of missing out. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where missing out is more painful yeah. than showing up mm -hmm. and it not going great. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear it from a lot of teens, 20s, and 30s. Right. Everybody has the same. We have that sense of belonging, mm -hmm. yeah. right? That sense of community. And yeah. we feel it when we don't have it, right? Yeah. I it's, think it's normal. Yeah. It's normal yeah, to absolutely. have that desire for social connection, like it's innate to us. Totally. That's, it's, it's just in our brains that we need that social connection. Like you said, the beginning of the pandemic ripped away from us. Mm -hmm. So we end up on social media. And is that a terrible thing? No, because right. we got to connect with people. But now it's a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes it goes in the opposite direction. <laughs> right, right. Um, can we talk a little bit about the comparing ourselves? And mm -hmm. I, I think everybody, everybody does that mm -hmm. through their scroll. They see people yeah. out doing whatever it is. You only put the good. At least I, I normally only see good from people. Yeah. It's very few and far between that I see mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. Um, and actually, in the one case, um, it was bad. It was like a cry for help. Mm -hmm. um, but what, like, what are, what? Are, now I'm kind of lost my train of thought on that, but where are like where are we going with that? Where we are comparing ourselves? Like how can people combat that? Well, okay, so um, I think we compare ourselves, and that actually creates a sense of anxiety, and it questions our self identity, right? Mm -hmm. Like who we are, and, and and it gives us a sense of feelings of inadequacy, both in your personal life and your career and whatnot. I think the starting place for that is, you know. Um, maybe in an individual level putting um, items or um, material on social media that's not so perfect mm -hmm. aspects of your life that are not so sp uh, um, yeah perfect yeah and I think that's important because it's it's going to encourage social connection but it's also going to let viewers on the other side know that yeah their lives aren't perfect and and there's a different way that we can view it so it's really challenging that on the individual level i think mm -hmm. i think honest conversation always yeah. yields the best mm -hmm. right even if it is a little bit ugly here and there but it also provides those solutions right mm -hmm. and if we're just going to the thing that's always good always right we start to maybe lose track of the things that we have to improve on mm -hmm. or um, maybe we get too into perfection culture mm -hmm. and we get so obsessed with it that unless it hits this untouchable standard because perfect is untouchable yeah um, then you get stratified based on how close you are to it mm -hmm. um, and I think we see a lot of that on Instagram mm -hmm. and a, a lot of the photo yeah. sharing apps, but uh, every app, every app is stratifying us into this way. Are you seeing that through your profession as well? I think what Sophia said, the inadequacy, it's mm -hmm. nothing, you know, I can't be good enough or I even our goals and expectations of ourselves, I'm never going to reach that perfection because right. it's unattainable, right? Mm -hmm. And when we're exposed to all of these things, like this person's writing a book or this person's mm -hmm. just graduated med school, like yeah. we're happy for them. And at the same time, comparing ourselves to their experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't do all those things. Yeah. So what would you suggest for someone to break out of this like box here, this, this thing that's starting to contain us? What could we do to like fight back? I think with uh, social media use, you have to understand um, your triggers um, when you're going on social media. So if like if you're noticing certain content is having an effect on your mood, mm -hmm. you know maybe unfollow a page. Um, mm -hmm. Being very mindful of how much time you're you're spending on social media, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I think it's really important to find a, a balance between your social media use versus social connection in person. And that can, so maybe once a week, making sure that you're going to see your friends mm -hmm. or um, joining a gym or um, cultivating a hobby, any of those things that yeah. is more in person within the community and, and trying to find that balance. Mm -hmm. Diversifying that experience, yep. you know, mm -hmm. and try giving it layers rather than just one thing that you're trying to get all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
man, oh man, yeah. this is hard to keep up with. <laughs> you know, like I, I feel, I feel for the young people mm -hmm. because yeah. they're the ones that are having to hold the reins on all these different platforms and live up to that expectation, yeah. that fear of missing out. And the yeah. trends right? are constantly changing too. Like we were talking off camera about how fast trends change and like trying to keep up with those. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that after this break. in-depth coverage of the most local stories in Stratford Perth, Brantford Branch, Guelph Wellington and the Waterloo Region. Hyperlocal stories that matter to you and your community. All this and more on your region this week. All local, all year round. New episodes every Friday at 7 p.m. right here on Rogers TV. world is changing. Now more than ever, we have seen firsthand the brutality of systematic racism. Here in Canada, we can do better. It is time to connect, commit, and change. I'm Queen. And I'm Aaliyah Ali, and we're inviting you to join us on Diverse and Converse. We'll connect you with leaders from the Black, Indigenous, and people of colour communities. Now is the time for change. symptom of bladder cancer. Don't ignore this warning sign. Not even once. I am God Greg. My name means everything. Tom Longboats! I am Wolf Clan, out of Daga Nation. I've run many different races. I've run to survive and to be free. I've run to win for honor. These people might be lazy, but this one's damn fast. My people respected our runners, people who carried important messages from village to village. I need a guide to the next post. Dispatch carrier, sir. I can get you there. God sakes, that slow down. Who do you think I am, Tom Longboat? No, sir. I am. Running makes me feel alive. It's everything. Tom Lombo was the first Indigenous person to win the Boston Marathon. He ran his way to international fame and became an inspiration to generations of athletes. Life can be stressful. I know that. We're here to help you. Simple, easy recipes, amazing guests. At Home with Chef D, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. on Rogers TV. Welcome to Tapestry Hall Style. I'm Carolina Suarez and I can't wait to show you the latest in entertaining food and fashion. Catch us in Tapestry Hall Style coming soon on Rogers TV. And we're back and we're kicking back too and I'm Greg and, and then and uh, we're here with Kristen and Sophia. We've had a great chat so far. Right? Mm -hmm. It's been really, really enlightening. It's an important conversation to have because so many of us can just be stuck in our own mind. Mm -hmm. And social media is so uh, pointed. 
right, at each of us. We all have slightly different uh, things coming through our feed based off of what we see or based off our, what our friends are posting and we're engaging with. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to talk a little bit about like the standards that are being set uh, for men and for women with the use of like filters mm -hmm. and what that does to people to see that. Like there's filters on there that can add muscles to you. There's features that take away certain blemishes. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what are you seeing? Um, with your clientele and just with the world in general, with people using these um, different things to maybe en enhance their their look and their perception of what their life is like. I think it's impacting self-esteem. I mm -hmm. think it's impacting body image and how we're perceiving ourselves because like you mentioned, on social media there's filters, mm -hmm. um, things are modified and, and that's not real it's not reality and that's not how we look in person um so but it's this it's what it's the information we're receiving from social media and we're seeing other people's pictures that have been modified mm -hmm. we it, there's this underlying i guess um perception that we get that that is true mm -hmm. uh, maybe on a subconscious level right so i i, I feel like it's impacting how we perceive ourselves mm -hmm. our, our overall self-esteem yeah mm -hmm. we can't help what our brain interprets in its sub subconscious mm -hmm. right and so if we're looking at these things that are trying to represent a standard of beauty that it first enters our brain as i should look like that yeah. you know but then later you rationalize it's like oh i don't have to but then over time i could imagine like an exhaustion Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, just constantly trying to fight yeah, it, you know, yeah. and then eventually just getting to the point where you just have to join in to have any kind of th catharsis, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, it seems to be representing like this is kind of at a, a breaking point, you know, we're starting to see um, adults in our life and our friends sometimes, you know, getting really wound up in this kind of stuff. What kind of impact are you seeing in families and in friendships from this kind of uh, dynamic? I think going back to Sophia's point, having that idea that this is not reality, mm -hmm. you know it's not reality, but it feels like it in the mm -hmm. moment, and kind of fighting back towards that, that can be really, I think, dangerous for, for children and teens, right. because they don't have our capacity, adult capacity to challenge that. Mm -hmm. Is that reality? What happens if I put an unfiltered picture up? Mm -hmm. What are people going to think? In comparison, in the scroll feed, I'm going to be the one that's different. Right. And that's kind of the importance. I can't think of one right now. I think Dove might do it. But the importance of those like no filter campaigns that they yeah. put out there, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it takes all everybody to to take that chance and to put themselves out there in that way, which was very difficult to, to do, like it can be. Um, it requires those things to happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you have to personally take that stand mm -hmm. to do that, to try and make a difference in that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, like just adding from Kristen, is uh, with the youth, I think it's important, you know, as guardians or parents or uh, as adults to communicate that at a pretty young age when they start using social media about, you know, uh, what you see on social media is not necessarily the reality and, yeah. and having those that conversation encouraging emotional mm -hmm. expression and encouraging them for to speak about uh, th their feelings I think is, is imperative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and how can we speak a little bit about like marriages and relationships um, what is social media done um, to this world and I guess over the pandemic too, what it's done mm -hmm. by everybody's home too I don't want to undermine social media. I think it's wonderful. It has helped us to connect and stay mm -hmm. connected, mm -hmm. especially d during COVID globally, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it gives us access to knowledge and all these wonderful things. And But um, I think it really impacts how we uh, interact with our uh, our, our partners um, and actually being in the present moment right even having your phone close by you hear the notifications mm -hmm. are you really in the moment and mm -hmm. I think it's having an impact um, how we how we're relating really mm -hmm. yeah yeah man I'm guilty yeah I'm yeah. so guilty we all, all guilty. do it I think we all, we all do it, are. We all do it. Hey. yeah so like <laughs> maybe there's a sub pandemic going on you yeah. know and it's a mental yes. health one yeah you yes. know absolutely and yeah. we got to tune in and start getting active on that kind of stuff yeah. you and know what are some things that uh, maybe you suggest uh, for people to do whether it's in their adult relationships at home with their spouse mm -hmm. or with friends I think one of the big things here is recognizing the impact that social media has on your brain itself, right? Yeah. You are scrolling, you are getting, you know, hits of dopamine every time you see something that's rewarding to you. Every time you experience something 
rewarding, kind of like the pendulum swings back mm -hmm. and it puts us into discomfort. And unfortunately, we're not okay with sitting in discomfort mm -hmm. right now, especially. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the pandemic was painful enough. Why, why would we? Yeah. Um, but we do have to learn how to do that. Do we have to disconnect? Yeah, it's overstimulating. Do we have to, like Sophia said, do we need to move the device? Because yeah. if my phone was sitting there, I would yeah. probably be glancing at it right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do I know if I'm addicted? Like, I know if I've been, you know, mm. drink a two four, I'm probably an alcoholic, <laughs> right? Or if I've been doing hard drugs every day, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm probably a drug addict. Mm -hmm. How do I know if I'm a social media addict, though? It, it seems to present itself differently. In the mor <laughs> I think in the morning, if you're waking up yeah. and you're like, what's going on on the phone? You're bombarded by whatever notifications came through on the phone. Yep. Um, what you're doing in the morning really sets the precedent for your day. I think from uh, like if you're feeling um, from like a, a nervous system perspective, right? Like if you're feeling completely exhausted all the time, that's a good indicator. But if you're noticing shifts in your mood, right? So if mm -hmm. you're noticing uh, feeling low or signs of depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. If you're noticing anxiety in social environments while you're interacting with others, that could be also another indicator. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what what about um, we talk a lot about beauty standards, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of like conflict that happens online to political, um, even just right down to some local issues mm -hmm. and stuff. People are willing to really get at arms down. over this. Yeah. And yeah. so is that kind of another offshoot of this or is that just personalities at work? I think with, uh, I think we saw a lot of that over the pandemic, especially political stuff mm -hmm. going on. It gets overwhelming for people. I can tell you personally, I, I just unfollow certain things yeah. because I, I don't have the capacity to hold all the world's information mm -hmm. and I'm not going to put myself through that and that's what I you know tell peop yeah. people to do as well. Really monitor what you are following. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're avoiding, yeah. you're monitoring, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. There's some, um, now I know that there's um, intentional efforts online mm -hmm. by uh, certain governments mm -hmm. around the world or certain just bad actors around the world that are trying to influence social media mm -hmm. in a nefarious way. Do you think that this is having it, like they're kind of harnessing this to um, influence people and get them away from, you know, what would, I don't know, I, don't, I hesitate to say the typical path, mm -hmm. but maybe something a little safer? Mm-hmm. I think there's certain like um, the, certain platforms and so, or certain material online is geared towards generating the, the dopamine, right? That um, uh, triggering that that pleasure uh, within us, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I do think that that does occur, and mm -hmm. it's it's because it's a business at the end of the day, right? And right. they're trying to uh, get traffic into whatever platform it is, and mm -hmm. yeah. I think on the flip side, there there's talk about the responsibility of, of governments or agencies to regulate access mm -hmm. to social media for mm -hmm. people who who shouldn't be accessing it. Mm -hmm. Well, I know when we've got a minute left, I just want to talk a bit about like what should people do if maybe they are they know somebody or maybe they are in that position of only having online relationships, like not having something in person. I would say first off the bat is if, if you're having online relationships, find somebody that you can meet in person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know, get, dip your toes in the water. That's going to be super scary. Like people with social anxiety, they do go in that direction and just take baby steps. Right. And last, before we wrap up, can you just share a little bit about where people can get more information from you? Um, okay, so we're with Marauders Counseling and Consulting Services. You can email um, info at marauderscounseling.com. That's awesome, Ben. Yeah, this is the end. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.
call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Work. 